Hey guys, again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our show. And if you love what you see, and I know you do, please rate, review, and subscribe. It would mean so much to us. Yeah, it absolutely means the world to us. Helps us get out to a wider audience, really just capture more people that we can help you with this show. Again, if you're getting value, check us out. Thank you again. So grateful to you. Hi, everyone. It is Monday. It is my favorite day in the whole wide world. Why? Because it's Mothers of Multifamily. It's the day I get to talk to, to these amazing, amazing, amazing moms. And the, the lady I have on today is fantastic. I am so excited to have her on. Welcome to the show, Katara Osman. And please, please let me know if I said your name wrong. Did I say it right? Is you did it absolutely, yes. yes. Thank you. I could say John Smith wrong like every single time. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Well, I'm so happy to have you on. Thank Folks, you. Katara is a multi-award winning real estate broker and entrepreneur with over a decade of experience in residential and commercial real estate, real estate investing. And she specializes, of course, in multifamily um, apartment buildings. Katera holds her BA in architectural technology and draftsmanship from the use in from the University of Hamburg, Germany, a diploma in interior design, multi, wow, million dollar guild designation, and luxury homes marketing specialist. She is fluent in five languages, including German, Persian, Farsi, uh, Pashto, did I say that right? Yes. And English. Katara was born in Afghanistan, raised in Germany, and immigrated to Canada in 2003. After becoming a single mother of two, of two very young children, not having her family to support her and starting financially all over again, her main goal was to invest in herself and to take action. Oh my goodness, my head is exploding. Katara, how, how are you doing it all? You're a single mother of two. You started off as a single mother of two built up your financial stability. How did you do that? You know, my dear, now that you, that I listen to it, you know, we just do it. I don't know how I did it. I just did it. I had no choice. I think um, I didn't give myself a choice. That is the, Good. that's what I have to say. I didn't give myself a choice. And, uh, you know, uh, being a, a first generation immigrant, uh, coming from from Afghanistan and then immigrating as, as I was very little would be immigrated to Germany living in different continents and coming here it's just you know we just do it so you basically gave I see the thing is I love to say make the choice but the thing is you made the choice not to give yourself another choice but to survive and to thrive so if you could could you go through the steps your life journey from the moment you became the single mother of two to this amazing, amazing. I mean, you heard me for my listeners. You heard everything that I just read. She is amazing, award-winning real estate broker, entrepreneur with over a decade of experience. So can you dive into, because so that, that's like the overview. Can you give us a little bit more into what makes Katera who she is today? So um, just a little bit of background, like I said, um, I, I was born in Afghanistan, we immigrated when I was a little to, to Germany and um, my parents were going as immigrants through a lot of hard time in Germany, you know, um, coming from a good upper family and then as immigrants, you know, living off uh, support from government and things like that. So it was really hard, it took a huge toll on their relationship. So by the time I was 17, I changed 22 schools because they were going through hard times. So, wow. yeah. Um, so I think at some point, because it, it's in our um, culture, uh, so I got married. It was an arranged marriage. And he was from Canada. And that's how I immigrated to Canada with him. And again, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest with you, when I came to Canada, I did not speak the language. So I did not speak English, um, just German and my uh, Afghani languages. But um, so I had to start all over again. I was dependent on my wow. ex at that time. I had to learn the language. I had to um, just do it all over again. And 
Um, to be honest with you, when I think when we were purchasing our first home, that's how I got into real estate. Um, I was just following the realtor and just looking what he was doing. And I asked him around and he's like, yeah, you could just go and pick up your license and, and do the courses. And that's how I got into real estate from there on. You know, I had no family here, um, just my, my ex's family. And so I started my, my career by just door knocking and cold calling and being every day out to talk to people so they can give me business. <laughs> So that's how I started. And like, unfortunately, six, seven years later, you know, the, we had to, we separated. It was by cho my choice. So um, my two wonderful kids, I, uh, they were very young to that time. Um, and so that's how uh, I started on my own. Again, all over again, with no money, no support. And um, yeah, so what I did was just put a goal in front of me. I put my goals there and I just followed what I wanted to do and made a decision that um, I want to be financially, financially free. I want to provide for my kids. Um, I was always afraid that I probably, you know, that it would be difficult providing for them. And that was, I think my fear all the time that was motivating me to do better. So yeah, that's how I started. So you started from a position of need. You needed, you needed to get this done. You needed to provide for your two young ones. You needed to provide for yourself and you needed to start over. So there's a lot of women out there that find themselves in that position wanting to either change their life or their life is changing or they want to change and make their lives better. And you've gone through that system. So from that moment that you found yourself in that, this position of, of need, you needed to up level your life for yourself, for your children. What was the first thing that you did? You know, any it is not easy, especially having young kids, not having the family around. I think what's really important is to first of all make a decision. You know, this is I decide for something, and then educate yourself, uh, invest time in your on yourself, and then good things will happen to you. There's things that will come. Like there's stuff has happened in my life to me that I cannot believe it that it just happened to me. And buying, for example, my apartment building. I don't know how I did it, but it just, but because I, I put myself there, I educated myself, I, I, I surround myself with good people. They give me a good book to read. They, then I, you know, this is things like that, that happens. It just happens. Things happens to you. And I mean, just from talking with you, having this positive outlook as well, because at any point, you could, and I'm sure it has crossed your mind before. I'm sure it has. You could have been like, oh, this is too hard. I can't do this. How can I make life easier? Negative, negative, negative. But instead of focusing on those negative thoughts, you decided to focus on the positive. You decided, like you said, to surround yourself with good people people that would that would give you suggestions on to what how to take your next step how to take the next step into into buying your first multifamily building let's talk about that how did you take down your first large multifamily and for my listeners out there i'm going to pause here and remind you that katara is the mother of two children she's a single mother of two children and she took down a large multifamily bu building I don't think anybody has any excuses after hearing that. So let's hear Katera's story and see how we can learn from it. So how did you take down that first multifamily building? So after, um, actually, after I um, started investing in real estate, I did probably everything that is out there from flipping homes, uh, pre-construction, you know, con two unit conversions and everything. So um at some point, I was just collecting homes everywhere and, uh, <laughs> you know, and didn't know why. I was just like, oh, it's a good idea to buy houses, you know. But <laughs> I, I didn't quite understand and I didn't have the mindset of an investor. Mm -hmm. So I, I just really ed educated myself a lot. And, and to be honest with you, the reason I got into multifamily was financially uh, for the, um, because anything you buy below, um, how do you say it, um, commercial loan. So mm -hmm. everything that was I, I was buying previously, 
it was all uh, under re like residential loans and I had to qualify for it but with my own income and things mm -hmm. like that and so that was very difficult like I said I had a bunch of homes here and there and, and I couldn't go to the bank to, to just get some more money else I can buy more so then I got myself into apartment buildings and that's when I took some courses I I, um, I took a course with with Edna Keefe but you know and um, she she helped me with that and that's how I got in that's amazing. Let's talk a little bit about mentorship now, because it sounds like I'm a huge from, fan. <laughs> yes, yes, I am too. And it sounds like from what I'm hearing from you, it's that you get to a point and you find a new need. So the bank stopped giving you money because you were doing it all in your, as personal loans and they could have all this recourse against you. So now you could hop into large or into large multifamily or multifamily in general. And now you could do non-recourse loans, you could do commercial loans and the world just kind of opened up to you. And the thing is so many people that they find themselves in this position, find themselves with a block in front of them, find reasons to stop. It sounds like every time you were presented with a block, you hurdled over that block no matter what it took. So this next block you hurdled over using mentorship. Can we dive into that? How did Absolutely. you find Edna and why did you choose her to take you to the next step? No problem. So here's the thing. Like I've been always a huge fan of education and mentorship and taking coaching programs from the time I've become a realtor. I, I've done um, for my business with other companies. I've, I've took uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad's uh, education courses. I've took Good course. Exactly. So I think that that is, I was always a huge fan and I spent a lot of, probably 10% of my, my income is going towards education, which I'm a huge fan. So, and I know, I know. I'm going to point that out, folks. She uses 10% of her income to go towards education. You should be doing the same thing too. That's why she's where she's at. Go on. You know, and uh, if you don't have the money, it's okay. There is so much free stuff online. You know it. There is so much on YouTube. There's so much you can, free newsletters that you can see. You can just go to networking events, hang around with the right people. Honest to God, it gives you so much information. And all of a sudden you come across a new idea and you're like, oh, that's a good idea. This is how I can do it. And it just happens. I think, you know, if I can do it, please. I did not speak the language. I came here with nothing. I have two children. All, you know, they were young now. Thank God, like they're, they're teenagers right now. So it's easier with taking care of them. But when I started, they were very little. I sometimes had them in the back of my car showing houses. They were like five and six years old. I would buy them sandwiches and just let's go. Mommy has to show houses. Let's go. And they had to do it, right? Yep. But this is the thing. We have to do it. I think just taking action and making a decision, taking action, and then just things will happen to you. Yes, yes. And it sounds like you were open to those things. So, okay. Okay. This is the other thing that you have to be, and it sounds like this is exactly how you are. Yes, you have to be very giving and live your life with an attitude of gratitude and attitude of giving value. But at the same time, and you are a perfect example of this, you have to be open to receiving the value as well. And it sounds like every time somebody was able to give you value, you were able to receive it. Like you said, oh, wow, that's a great idea. How about I do that? Then it means that you were open to receiving that value so many times. I find that I fall into this trap. I try and give, and then my ears are sometimes blocked to the receiving end. I, I forget to receive as well. So can you give my listeners out there some tactics, some advice as to how to be on the receiving end? You know, and I, you're right. I had, a, I had a hard time with that as well to receive. I am such a giver. And, you know, when I just looking at it, uh, for example, the, the clients that gave me the opportunity to sell their homes, for mm -hmm. example, right. You know, not speaking the language, not, it, it, it's hard. So I gave and I, they loved me, but then I was open for it and I learned to, to receive as well. I think there was some a couple of books I read about it. You know, like you have to be open to, to receive as well. And, I don't know if there is any, I don't have any, to be honest with you, a tactic for it, but the more you give, the more you receive. 
Yes. Yes. So before I let you go, can we, can we talk a little bit more about mentorship? How did you find Edna, which was your mentor at the time? Um, and why did you choose her and how did that help you level up? Um, I found Edna actually online on, on social media, right? <laughs> like all of us, I found her there and um, just signed up on her 90 days and uh, she became, uh, I love her. We, we, I, I call her my friend because she reminds me a lot of myself. There's a lot of, we have a lot of similarities, similarities in our personality. So um, yeah, that's how I got to know her. And, uh, but other than that, I, I take so many other programs, my dear, as yes. well. And it just, you know, with anybody, anybody that has something to offer, I listen to it, I invest in it, and I buy their products. So maybe that's Fantastic. Why. So for my listeners out there, my mamas and my papas too, and my singles, everybody that's listening today, take it from Patera. Educate yourself. Be open to giving but then be open to receiving as well. It sounds like Katera has received all this information, all this education that has built her and brought her to the position she's in now. So two more questions. I know I said the last question was going to be the last one, but I have two more. So the first one, the first one being, what's the next step for you? you know, I'm not there where I want to be yet, uh, mm-hmm. but I know I'm on my way. As long as I don't stop, um, I'm on my way. What's my next step? Um, I have I have uh, goals. You know, if I could just turn the camera and show you my vision board, it's full with my goals, what I want to do in life. Um, I think name, uh, name two that's on your vision board. Right now, I think there is uh, there is a couple of apartment buildings in there <laughs> that I have my eyes on. And uh, what else do I have? You know, it has been. We didn't talk about it, but I I do a lot of volunteer as well. Um, I do once a week volunteer and it is my dream to open my own charity to this is it's my dream I've been since since uh, since I was in my high school in 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 um, in university time I was working in senior homes helping seniors Mm -hmm. and you know preparing food for them and things like that so that became just my passion until today's day I just I I work for meals on wheels in our um, community and I deliver food for elderly people Uh, so and and this is this is I think my one of my other biggest goal big goals are to offer have my own charity so that's what I'm working towards have you ever thought about opening your own senior housing establishment I do. This is another thing that is on my mind. If I can find the right property for that, that would be a dream come true. Well, you are in the right position to find that property and make that dream happen. And just by knowing you in these few moments that we've had together, I know you're going to get there. And if you ever need help or suggestions as to like where to look or who to go to, to for senior housing, just let me know because there's so many people out there that do senior housing and can help you take that next step. I'm, I'm really, really so so excited for you and I love hearing when people have the dream and are taking the action steps to give back especially to your community especially to the senior the seniors in our lives because those are the people that we've built our lives upon so it's only right that we we take care of them as well so Katera one more question if my listeners want to get a hold of you want to know more about you and what you do or even to help you reach your goal of helping out the people in your life and the seniors in your life where and how can they get a hold of you thank you so much so uh you know i'm a full-time realtor um i am a full-time property manager i have my own property management company um i do investments so i have a couple of websites they can go it's just easy katera.ca or uh, brilliantmove.ca and they can find information about me there and contact me anytime for any information or even just to chat. Perfect. I will leave all the information links. And Katara, thank you so much for coming on. If you could leave one word, one phrase, even a little bit more, a little bit more advice for my listeners, what would it be? Thank you very much, first of all, for having me. Thank um, you. The, the one thing I can say is just take action. This will change your life. When you take action, when you take the first step, it will change your life because there's good things comes towards you. Yes. <laughs> She's jumping. Speaking my language, singing my song. <laughs> Absolutely. So just take action. So you heard from Katara. And if Katara says it, it must be true. 
take action. Thank you again. I'm so honored to have you on the show today. Thank you very much, my dear. And to all of my listeners out there, I am so grateful that you chose today to listen to this show. And if you like what you heard, please, 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 please rate and review and subscribe. That would mean everything to me. And again, I'm so grateful. You have a great day. Bye now. Join us for your second cup of coffee every Monday through Friday at noon. Live every day bringing us our best content we've done so far. Super excited, super engaging bunch of great guests. We're here to answer your questions and we so appreciate you listening. Make sure to check this out. Can't wait to see you.